Hello there, and very welcome to another playthrough here at Almost Solitaire. We continue with um, Commands and Colors Ancients, and this time we will play uh, Plate 7, or oh, 479 BC. Uh, so we are returning to the mainland Greece after briefly visiting the Sicily in the last battle, uh, where we had the Battle of Himera at on our table. So, um, what's happening here then? Well, after the Battle of Thermopylae the year before, uh, and after the defeat of uh, King Leonidas and the 300 Spartans, well, among with other Greeks, uh, Greek allies of the Spartans, uh, the Persians, uh, well, they roamed the Greek mainland subdued some cities and whole regions like Macedon and Thessaly and um, they even went to Athens actually and, and sacked that city uh, I think actually they were there twice um, but there were still some important cities uh, resisting the Persians maybe the two most important uh, were Athens and also Sparta. Um, so, what kind of rescued the Greeks from total annihilation here was the Battle of Salamis, also in 480. Uh, it was a naval battle where the Greeks won a crushing victory. So, basically, they the Persians lost their fleet more or less and got a bit nervous Xerxes got a bit nervous about that because okay now the Greeks still have a larger navy and they could do some amphibious operations and uh, in the back of the Persians so he divided his uh, army into two uh, took the one half and marched home uh, and left the other half in Greece to continue and end the campaign in, in mainland Greece. That army was uh, led by Mardonius, by the way, who also was present in Thermopylae. And, um, well, the Greeks who were unified in, uh, well, the Greeks that still resisted the Persians uh, managed to unify and uh, take a stand at uh, the well, uh, how can you say at the foot of the uh, Peloponnesian uh, Peninsula, uh, denying the Persians entry to that uh, peninsula or isthmus, and uh, on the other hand, they want didn't want to march out from there either because uh, the Persians could then get the benefit of the plains there and so forth, and they have like a cavalry superiority there, the Persians. So, it was kind of a stalemate. Uh, and at that point, Mardonius actually did march to Athens again, threatening, threatening them, uh, and also gave them a chance to join him. Uh, and the Athenians felt a bit... Uh, well, they didn't have the cover of the of the army because Athens was wide open uh, to the Persians uh, so they actually um, came up with a ultimatum to their Greek allies the Spartans and others that if we don't march upwards and meet the Persians on the field we will actually uh, join them because well, they didn't see any future for Athens in uh, being sacked <laughs> and being wide open to the enemy. So they could switch sides and join them because they were offered freedom and uh, even some territorial uh, expanse by the Persians. All right, so of course um, losing Athens as an ally was uh, would be a big blow. So. Uh, what the consul did, the Greek consul did actually agree to march 
and meet the Persian army. Um, and at one point, the Persians had retreated up to Potsie, uh, or some on the, on the plains outside of the city, and they built a great camp there, a fortified camp, awaiting the Greeks who march up there. Um, but the Greeks didn't want to attack the camp itself because it was, uh, uh, first of all, it was behind a river and also out in the plains. So, because the, as the Persians had the cavalry superiority, they would, uh, they could uh, benefit of that battleground. So they, so the Greeks actually stayed and just, you know, kind of sieged or at least kept the Persians in check by uh, holding the hills outside of the of the camp. I think on this map the, the camp would be located up here somewhere behind the Persian lines here uh, and the city of Plate is somewhere down here. So uh, kind of a stalemate again guys were watching each other um, and since the Greeks didn't attack well, the Persians uh, came up with a cunning plan. They were they were using the cavalry instead to harass the Greek supply lines, and they managed to uh, take control of a big supply train that were head were heading to uh, the Greeks. And they also got hold of the the Greek water supply. Um, so. The Greeks were eventually in a bad position here. So they wanted to retreat to a better position and and Pausanias, the, the Spartan who, who kind of led this army, uh, I say kind of because he well he was the appoint, appointed commander but he couldn't really give orders directly to Athenians and, and others. So so each had their own leader, but he gave order of a retreat, a nighttime retreat from the posi uh, current positions, and well, what happens were that the, the Athenians held the left flank, the Spartans the right flank, and other minor Greek allies were in the center. And the only guys who actually treated during the night were these guys in the center. So when daybreak came, uh, the Athenians and, and uh, Spartans were still preparing for the retreat and were just like kind of starting it. So they they were in a kind of a disarray. Mardonius did notice that and thought they were in a kind of a total disorder and uh, and on the retreat so he thought okay now is the time to strike so he ordered his men uh, over that river protecting the camp and up in the hills uh, to attack the uh, the Greeks and when the Greeks did see that they had of course to turn about and face the Persians and give battle um, so, and the situation on in this scenario is is when that has happened. So the, the Persians have uh, reached the Greeks who who are standing here in line. So we have the Athenians here, we have the Persians here, along with some allies, um, and here we have, as we saw, Mardonius with his. Uh, kind of hand-picked troops. We have some. We have some immortals here, really an elite. Uh, on this side, we have uh, Timogenides and and some troops. And these are mostly actually Greeks. Uh, I think they are uh, Thebians, actually. Um, at least I think uh, uh, Timogenides is uh, a Thebian, and I know there are. At least the infantry here are, are Greek. And here we have uh, Artabatus, who, who actually 
he didn't want to see this battle happening. He was kind of uh, reluctant to to follow the Greeks. So he's kind of back here, and I think in history he 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 was just waiting here, and when the Greeks attacked the Persians and routed them, they just retreated from here. But we have them here as a reserve for the for the Persians in this battle. So if things go good, we can also throw in those guys. Or bad. Alright, so, and here we have kind of a hook formation. I think this symbolizes the Greeks in has started the retreat. Uh, and as usual at this time, the Greeks are in hoplite formation. We have some Spartan hoplites here as well, some auxiliaries and some lights. Uh, and here we actually have, we haven't seen that I think before, uh, Greek bowmen. It's a rare thing to see, but I think these are actually Athenians. They're bowmen from Athens. Alright, so uh, um, by that I think we could uh, looking start to looking into the scenario details more. Uh, just thinking if there's more to say about this. Well, as I said, just the historical outcome was uh, well, <laughs> the funny thing, or funny or funny, but uh, this Pausanias refused to storm the, the the Persians because he just got bad omens all the time when <laughs> when uh, he was doing some goat sacrifice and. The guys here were decimated by bow fire. I mean, they have lots of bows here. Uh, as you can see, we have two bow units, and also we have these immortals who also are equipped with bows. So they will be raining uh, arrows here. And but at last, he got a good omen from the gods and stormed the, the Persians, uh, who then routed. Also, the Athenians won a really fierce battle here against uh, their Greek brothers here and barely managed to uh, rout those guys as well. And then the Persian army was in full rout uh, and that actually ended Xerxes' invasion of Greece uh, at this time. So, a very important battle. Maybe even more than Thermopylae, I don't know. but. Uh, a significant victory for the the Greeks that shaped the future of that that land. Uh, I mean, imagine what would happen if the Persians would have won here. Then the cause would have been lost, I think, for for Greek resistance. Anyway, let's have a quick look at the war council. Then, so we have five command cards for both, meaning I will deal two cards to both sides uh, and we have the Persians moving first. We'll fight till six banners uh, and the special rules we have the immortal units we know those guys we have the hoplite infantry rule in effect uh, and we have these <coughs> uh, three Spartan special hoplite units the fire block units here. And speaking of those uh, in the Thermopylae Thermopoly scenario I played uh, the grand overview uh, if you remember I was I was checking this chart out so that they were noted as heavy uh, these are the Spartan hotlights heavy uh, with five dice and they were not affected by the hoplite uh, rule that turned out to be false uh, uh, a kind viewer noted me notified me of that um uh, thanks thanks dave and as i see now i mean this is kind of obvious i mean this row on the heavies are empty so there's a clear misprint that i don't know why i didn't miss that in the last last time i checked it out so uh of course i will revert to the to the old rule so to speak again so spartan hoplites even though they have five blocks they are mediums should be treated as mediums. They will fight with four dice only and they are affected by the hoplite rules, meaning they will can be activated by mounted 
uh, mounted uh, cards or uh, mount, uh, cards ordering mounted units would be the correct thing to say, I guess. All right, so here we have the battleground set up. Uh, so we have the Athenians here. Uh, lots of hoplites, the Athenian bowmen, we have some auxiliaries there. Uh, we have the Spartans over here with Pausanias there. Uh, lights on the flanks and auxiliary, otherwise it's the phalanxes that rule that side as well. And on the Persian side we have, as we already did see in the scenario booklet, bowmen immortals, some auxiliaries. Back here we have uh, Mardonius with a, um, some medium heavy cavalry and we have more auxilia in the support back here. Uh, here we have the Greek wing of the Persian army. We have bowmen, we have uh, auxiliaries and we have medium infantry. Even though these are Greeks they don't fight in in phalanx formation in this battle for some reason. Uh, we have some light cavalry and we have a medium cavalry. Uh, and back there we have, we could call it the reserves, we have two auxiliaries and a medium uh, cavalry unit. So that's it. And the Persians go first and I think if we move to a kind of a battle plan, I think, I mean, we have the skirmish superiority up here, so we will, if possible, start firing here. We have a three hex range with four units on in this line, so we can we can fire. Good thing would be to get the uh, dark in the sky card right, then we could give a real heavy volley on the on the Greeks here. On this side. I don't really know how to play as the Persians. Uh, I think we are kind of weaker than the than the Greeks here. Not much, but a bit. We don't have skirmish superiority either. We have uh, a bow unit, but also a bow unit for the Greeks. So pretty, maybe a kind of an even fight here, though. So it depends on if we get some good cards, maybe. If we get the first hit in like a double time or something, then it could be worth it to storm the, the Greek lines here. But otherwise I'm expecting to get attacked by the Greeks. And, uh, and keep that in reserve, see what happens where, and see where we should throw it in. We could just start marching it forward uh, into the gap here and it would be in a closer range to hit the flanks of either wing here. As for the Greeks, here I feel we just want to close the distance as fast as possible, get into a clash of shields with the Persians up here and try to root them. And maybe get Mardonius as well. By the way, in history Mardonius did uh, uh, die in this battle. Um, he died together with his, with his hand-picked soldiers around him. Um, and I think also it's uh, the guy who killed him is named in in the uh, uh, who was that who, who wrote that I don't remember but um, I think they know the name of the guy who killed him actually a Spartan uh, in on this flank um, I don't know it's again a kind of depending on the cards I get I, I think the priority is here, but we could of course move forward here as well. Uh, we have a slight superiority in, in numbers, I think, and force. They are kind of dangerous with the cavalry. They could ride around and block some retreat paths, so we should keep an eye out of those guys. Yeah, and by that I think uh, we are ready to start off turn one and see what happens here. So, the Persians have 
order to use center and outflanked. So <clears throat> we could either start moving up the reserves that I, that I talked about a bit slowly or we could we could um, start off with some skirmishing maybe <clears throat> bad thing is that those bowmen are located in the center so we cannot activate those with that card that would be nice to activate two here and maybe two there um, but that's not possible not the bow unit at least so maybe we should thinking of um, playing the two in the center just moving up one of the reserves and fire with those bow units from the hill either against that hoplite unit or that bow unit there I think I will choose the hoplite there actually um, because I don't see what two units I sh would benefit to activate here right now could move up with some light cavalry or something and, and throw some javelins to start harassing the Greeks, the Athenians here, but uh, no, no, I will go with the two in the center this time. So I will activate the bow units here and I want to open mm, with what we could move up to the hills with the cavalry, of course. I think I do that. I just move that guy one hex forward. Or maybe we should move it even more forward. Like that. Now we're actually in striking range of the flanks of the Greek army, which is a nice thing. So, <clears throat> that was the movement. And we have one combat. So I will start firing at those uh, Greek hoplites coming there or standing there and we missed them so no initial success here for that skirmishing but well we have a cavalry in good striking range there let's uh, see what the Greeks have then in their hand they have a line command and they have two in the center. Two in the center, I don't think is that good right now. Even though we could activate those bow units, of course, and fire back. We could advance with the lights, throw some javelins, but or even up on the hill here and throw javelins. But I think I will start marching the Spartans with the line command. Because if we do that now, we are then in striking range. Additionally, we can engage in both ranged and a close combat with this card. So we can move one hex forward and throw some javelins. So we get some skirmishing as well. So we order all this line. We'll flip that down so we remember to battle with those guys. Those guys can also battle, they only marched one hex, and so do the lights here. So we have three units who can actually throw some javelins. So these lights only have one target, it's the enemy bow units there. So they will start harassing those. No luck there though. And I think we'll fire at the flank unit as well because you know if we get the flag those guys need to retreat so those lights throw their javelins against the bow unit there okay we got a hit first blood again and as usually it's a uh, Persian blood that flows first uh, we got these auxiliaries firing at the same unit there's another hit so Heavy casualties from javelins here on the flank. Good, uh, 
good skirmishing by the Greeks there, and they also got their heavies in striking range now. So this is a bit worrying for the Persians, I'm sure, because I think they have wanted to skirmish more there before the clash. So Greeks were lucky to get the line command at this point. Okay, so we hide the Greek rack and see if the Persians have anything funny. Okay, we, we know these guys and they also have a line command. And I'm thinking of... Alright, this is interesting. <clears throat> we could order that you that line now. And fire with basically the whole line. So we could get one chance of skirmish before the, the fight begins at least. Or we could actually move up and get the first hit in the melee. Hmm. I always I, I like the you know to get the first hit because then you can decimate the guys before they can hit you. I mean it's a big difference hitting with four uh, dice, also hitting with. Uh, with the uh, sword symbols, then only two dice, and only basically hitting with the blues. Mm. I don't know. This is 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 uh, should I roll for it? Maybe. Yeah, I'll do that, and I I will give it a fifty percent chance. So. One to three, I will go for the skirmish option. Uh, four to six, I will close in, even with the uh, um, auxiliaries there. And I still will get some fire on the flanks going. So, okay, one to three is the skirmish. Yeah, okay, we go for the skirmish option. So I play play their line command. It kind of feels better. I mean, we can decimate the Greeks. Also with this uh, order, so I ordered those guys, and I can actually also order the these guys now. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to leave that position though, because I am giving some support back here. I was also thinking we could move those guys here. We cannot battle this turn, but they are in a position. But that means. Ah, uh, well, that's not too bad. Then the whole line is actually supported by that cavalry also in the flank. So I will actually do that. So we start with movement. Go here. We are ready for battle next turn and we had to extend our line to meet the Greek big line here. Uh, but those guys cannot battle, so we flip that block up and then we go to the battle phase. And uh, I will try to get as much hits as I can against Pausanias, I think. So the bow units up here will fire at Pausanias. And we hit with blue symbols. Okay, you see, it's uh, it can happen at times. So we decimate Pausanias hoplite unit there to four. This is done. The mortals fire just I guess the opposite guys there. They didn't hit anything though. We got the other immortal guy fighting or firing at the same unit. No hits there either. Uh, too bad, I was hoping to get another hit on those guys. By the way, I forgot to check leader. Let's see if, if Pausanias uh, survives. Yeah. And now. I think I fire with those guys next, and now we go for the flank, hoping for some retreat results. So two dice against the flank light unit there, and that's two hits. That was a good hit. So they were giving back for the 
for the casualties they uh, got on our bowmen there. And the bowmen are still to fire and they target the same unit there. Oops, and that was uh, too ambitious for a, for a roll. Okay, let's re-roll that die. And it was a hit. So the lights here are really decimated now. Um, Persians close to getting the first banner actually. And by that, we are ready with the line command. I'm quite happy with the result. Well, at least one hit on those guys and we got their flanks weakened quite a bit. So, Persians will grab another card, of course, and we will head over to the Greeks. All right, uh, this is good because now we will probably be able to hit the, hit the Persians with some extra boost. So let's play that card. Yeah, we'll play that now, because we are in striking range, so it's, it's worth it, totally. So we roll 5 dice, and hoping to not get too many of the flags and, and these. Okay, we were kind of unlucky here, to be honest. I mean, we have no heavies, so we actually can only act with one unit. was not good. So who should we activate then? Do we dare to run forth and attack? I think we have to. Someone needs to lead the way for the Spartans and inspire the other guys, right? So it will be Pausanias himself going up here giving those immortals a blow. So this will be five dice now because of the Spartacus card we just played. And we hit with all... Well, it's all bells and whistles included here. So, a hit, a hit, a hit, and a hit. Finito. So those guys are done. Wow. That's a Spartan way to fight, I guess. And of course we get a banner. And these guys just run into the lines of the Persians. And as a matter of fact, I have another combat. Bonus melee combat as I vacated that hex. And of course I will hit the other heavy or the immortal guy there. So we get five dice still. I mean, this card affects the whole whole turn, of course. So, even though we only activated one unit, we are still doing some heavy damage on the on the Persians. Okay, a bit less. They, we I think they lost some momentum in this advance now, but they attack in the flank. They get one hit on the mortals. Those will, of course, fight back now, and they are adjacent to Mardonius here, so uh, they will hit with leader symbols as well. Okay, that was a heavy blow against Pausanias' unit. Three hits, uh, so a real mess here now. Uh, and we, of course, need to see check for leader loss. Now, uh, Pausanias is fine, but that was not good. The retaliation of the Persian unit there was pretty hard. Okay, now we need to shuffle the deck and um, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, the deck is reshuffled. Uh, the Greeks have the new card. Well, this was um, hmm. Let's see if we can inspire other Greek units by that charge. But 
uh, Persians are sensing now they can grab one, two, perhaps three banners in one blow. Let's see if they are managed to do that. Depends on the cards. Okay, now it's time for the flank, I think, or the lights. Hmm. What would be really nice now is to the good thing would be to you know <clears throat> block these guys' retreat path. We cannot do that without flank card because I think not. No, we well maybe we could. No, we cannot. We cannot reach both these hexes from, from, from this uh, area here. But if we would play the light cards, we could move those guys there. We could move basically those auxiliaries there. Then we have blocked their retreat path. But then we don't have that much to attack with. We have the bow unit here. We have those guys who can move one and throw a javelin. No, that's not good. Not good enough. It's safer to hit with the immortals and maybe the, the cavalry as well. Mm. I think so. I'll play the outflanked. So here we will activate those guys and we will move up Mardonius with his cavalry and here hmm. should it just pass? I don't know if we want to close in on the Greeks here, to be honest. I wonder if we should instead reinforce these guys with sending something over here. Hmm. I mean, we could pick cavalry and start moving it towards that flank. Even two cavalry units. And then just hope we stand our ground here. We, I mean, we can move the cavalry quick back, back and forth. But for instance, the light cavalry could get far off to this side and even engage in the next turn. So I will do that. I will activate my cavalry. Uh, move them. Maybe I'll stay with the mediums here anyway. I will go just back one hex with those guys. The lights will now start moving to the other flank, so they go four, so they can ride up here. Here I will actually march up with the immortals now, and march up with the cavalry. So now I will hit with the cavalry, hopefully I get them, if not I have the immortals to fight. If I get them with the cavalry, I can use the immortals attack another phalanx here. So. Uh, this is why I, I move those Immortals forward one hex. So let's start the attacks. We have Cavalry attack first. Mardonius with us, so we hit with the uh, leader symbols. And um, it's three dice. We got one hit. That's actually enough. These guys are wiped out. And we get the Persian first banner. It's uh, one to one. Looks like an even fight for once. And now we need to check uh, Pausanias' uh, fate here. Okay, he survived. So he will take his mount and move back here. He attached that uh, phalanx of Spartans there. Okay, the thing is, now these guys can move up one hex, they could move one more and attack again.
And Mardonius is sensing victory here, so he will now try to inspire heat troops by doing that. So he moves here and does his bonus combat. So he rolls three dice again against those Spartans. I don't know if... Maybe this is silly. I probably won't be able to retreat those guys. And then they will hit back with four dice. Ah, what the heck? Let's do it. It's a Persian all-out charge here. So, okay, we hit them with one. So we are getting them at least down to four now. Now they will hit back with four dice. This I'm a bit afraid of. Okay, one hit. Okay, I need to check the leader, leader losses as well. Uh, on both sides, because we lost one unit of the cavalry as well. So an exchange there. Let's check the fate of Pausanias first. He's alright. And Mardonius, he's alright too, even though it was close call there. So that was the cavalry charge. We still have immortals. Since those guys were wiped out, we can now attack the other uh, the other left uh, Spartan phalanx there. And we have four dice in the attack now. And we are adjacent to a leader. So one, two, and three hits. Is this is impressive? A good, good charge going on by the Persians now. So three down. They hit back with four. Let's see if the wall of hoplites can hit back. They don't have any leader adjacent to them, so they actually only hit with one. So immortals are really showing how to tackle Spartans now. All right, that was a turn, so... That was cool, really, really cool. I mean, this is, this, this would be an even battle. Okay, so, discard that one. We hide the... the Persian rack, and we give them another card. And, and see what the... Greeks have in their hand. They can only activate in the center now, but they are kind of happy with that because they have a few important units here now. So I will play... I will try to do as much damage as possible now. So I will activate three units here. That will be these hoplites, those lights, and I will also activate the bows now. The Athenians will fire off here. So, for movement, I will now cross the border to the right hand side. Even though I know I have another activation in the center next time. Uh, but my plan is to wipe out those immortals, that's important. Hopefully get to that hex and then also do an attack against that cavalry. Who will evade, but uh, anyway I can, I can roll the dice for it at least. And these lights, well, let's see who they will hit. I don't know yet. If those guys are still there, I will try to hit them. Otherwise, one of these guys here. So, that was the movement. Could start firing from here. I will target those uh, bow units on the hill. I don't think there is any terrain modifications for that. It's only for close combat we have terrain modifications. So, we'll fire up the hill with two dice. And hit nothing at all. Okay, so here we have Pausanias leading another attack with a new phalanx unit he attached to, and he will hit those immortals, trying to get those out. And he managed to do that. He got two hits, we only have two blocks left here, so it's over for them. Uh, so we get the second Spartan banner for that. So he will now bonus advance up here. Attack the cavalry. Yeah, the cavalry will evade two hexes back. But we can still do some damage with a bit of luck. We did not. We needed blue f blue symbols for that. So the attack stops here. 
kind of this drop the line weakened units here. I'm a, not sure how this goes for the Spartans actually. Um, and then we have the lights yet. Okay, now the, both of the units are supported. So we can probably not force a retreat, or we could if we move uh, two flags, of course, but I will try to hit those uh, auxiliaries there with hoping to get some damage on them. No, nothing there. Well, well, well. That was that turn. I don't know. Doesn't feel really good for the Greeks up here. Mm. I think, yeah, I think the Persians can. Yeah, I mean, okay, the Persians has lost both of their immortal units. That's a heavy blow for them. Uh, but on the other hand, Spartans has lost one of their Spartans phalanx units or hoplite units. One decimated. Really. Uh, they're down to 40% of their original strength. Another one with some damage here with Pausanias in the lead. The lights here are very weakened. We have a weakened unit there of the Persians of course and also the cavalry took a hit. But otherwise we have more cavalry here that could hit. We have the lights coming. We could put in more forces to this flank if you get the cards for it. So I think the, the Spartans can be here very pressed here. I don't know, maybe the Greek needs to activate the Athenians to uh, gain more banners. But this was this will also be a very heavy fight. It's This will not be an easy fight for the Greeks. So, well, they are in the lead 2 to 1. I think I'll stop here for this video and upload it and continue gaming this later. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I did. It's an even battle. It's hard to say how this will end. And uh, thank you for watching. See you again.